right, happy Saturday and welcome back to Twin Stick Garage. On today's episode, I wanted to do a little more work on the 359 Peterbilt here. And what needs, uh, something I've been putting off for a while now, but really needs to get done is the coolant system. I didn't do anything to it from when I dragged it out of the field. It's still got the original lines. Uh, I put a new switch in to run the fan motor uh, a year ago, but actually the fan motor crapped out on the way to the Lesco truck show. So there was no way to get any heat in the cab and it was awfully cold. So I got a new fan motor that we'll put in. I'm pretty sure all the valves are all seized up on the inside, so we're going to have to replace all of those. We'll clean the heater core. And then I want to replace all of the coolant lines, the ones back to the sleeper, to the heater core there, and just all the coolant lines around the engine. We'll drop the coolant out of there. And uh, I also reached out to Cat and got a new thermostat. Figure that's probably overdue and, and uh, yeah, we'll, we'll get that all fixed up and hopefully get the coolant system or the HVAC system working. Uh, well, at least heat anyway. We'll worry about air conditioning another day. So with that, let's get started. Okay, so right out of the gate, I've discovered a, an issue here. Can you spot what it is? I can't open the hood all the way. Oh, man. So I've got to back the truck up about that much in order to get the hood open while we still leave the garage door closed and save all our heat. So I guess we'll have to, we'll have to start the old girl up and and back it up just that little bit. And maybe what I should do is when I get it to the right spot where I can open the hood, maybe I'll paint some lines on the floor so at least I know how far to back it up next time. <sighs> Live and learn. <laughs> now I might not be a smart man, but I know a good deal when I see it. So I was walking through Princess Auto a while back and uh, I, I noticed this compressor now normally they're about twelve hundred dollars or 1100 bucks and they had this one on for 500 i think what happened was the person that bought it it wasn't large enough didn't have enough cfm in order for them whatever they were doing so they took it back and i think princess auto only gave them 500 bucks credit so that's what they were selling it for so i quickly ran up to the till and bought it and by the time i came back there was already like three other guys looking at it so i'm like sorry sorry it's already taken so now we finally got a decent air compressor and this thing is amazing. I was actually trying it out last night. Now my previous air compressor was only about half height and half the CFM. And when I'd be standing away on Snowman, it would run out of air. So I'd, I'd sand for like, I don't know, a minute and it would run out of air and I'd have to let it build back up again and go do something else. And it was just terrible on productivity. But now I can go and it just keeps pumping out air. So that is going to be really nice for doing the body work on snowman so really happy with that okay so in order to get the peterbilt out of here out of the garage i need to do the anti-smoke valve same as kind of what i had on snowman so i don't really want to start it and run it until it builds air because it's going to completely fill the, the shop full of smoke and before I'll be able to actually release the brakes and back it up that three or four inches that I need. So I'm gonna pipe in this new uh, air valve. So I went and actually got three of these setups because I would need one for all three trucks. And I'm improving the one that was on Snowman. So I've got a, uh, a one-way valve. So I'll run the, a line from the air tank to this. Yeah, I guess it would go this way because the air is going into the tank. And that way, if, uh, and then I've got the shutoff valve as well so you can hook shop air up and it'll flow into the tank and then you can close it off but this one-way valve is kind of a backup if this ever gets bumped because I'm gonna have this plumbed into the uh, lower area of the sleeper and if this ever gets bumped like that if you didn't have the one-way check valve air could flow and you'd lose air while you're going down the road so it's kind of a, a double system check valve and a ball valve I think it's gonna work quite well all right let's get that on there 
So I'm just about done setting up this anti-smoke valve. I just drilled a hole and put a, a grommet in and then ran the line down to the uh, secondary air tank there. So that should be good to go. Okay, let's see if this works. Put that air compressor to work. Oh, beauty. <laughs> All right. Now we can fill up the air tanks, fill up the bags. Nice. Okay, we're aired up. Start it up now and back it up four inches. smoke. Maybe we'll open the doors and let a little fresh air in and get that all out of here. Then we can get to work on the coolant system. First things first is I got to get the coolant out of here. And when I bought this truck, this uh, petcock valve was busted off. So I never was able to drain the coolant. So I think what we'll do now is we'll just get a socket and we'll back this guy out and just let all the coolant drain out. I got some pails to catch it all. And once the coolant's all out of there, then we can start taking off these lines and getting them replaced. But you can see they're all dried out and bulged, and that's, uh, <laughs> that's I was playing with fire. These things probably would have let go eventually. So good time to get it all replaced. And then I'll probably replace these shutoff valves as well, because they seem seized. I can't even turn them either way. And then this is interesting. So this here is the block heater. You can see it uh, plugs in and there's a heating element in there. I'll try and get a good view of it. So there's a heating element in there. And what happens is, is the cold coolant comes in. This is the intake side and it warms it up. And then the warm coolant naturally rises up and goes up into the block. And then it just keeps cycling around. But I don't know how well it's cycling with, uh, with that hose pinched like that. So that's just another thing we'll fix. That's why we're down here. Get this tip top. Oh, this is fun. Okay. No, not 5 8 Must be 11 steams. Ah! <laughs> Man, I need a snipe or something. God, there it goes. Is that better? Yeah, that should fall into the bucket. Ah! Here comes the coolant. Ugh. Shit. Good thing I was wearing glasses. Okay. So I got two full pails there. And it's just finishing up into the third pail. And looks like I got a little, little spillage to clean up still, but no big deal. Here, kitty, kitty, kitty. <laughs> Just kidding. Okay, so now we know that that is not the right way to do this. I mean, obviously, if the petcock valve would have been there, you could have slowly opened it and then the flow would have started and it would have been more controlled as opposed to just pulling the plug and it goes everywhere. So that is why we're gonna replace this, but little uh, PSA, make sure when you're mucking around with coolant that you wear a face shield. I at least had safety glasses on but I still went and did a, uh, a bit of a face wash there to get, uh, to get it all off. But it's no big deal. I think we're gonna live and uh, let's get going on the hoses now. Oh, I'm getting tired of drinking coolant. So I just broke this loose and there was still a little bit more that poured out. I think that's it now. I think that's all of it. Yeah, definitely need to fix that up. I'm not digging that pinch line there. I don't think this uh, block heater was doing what it should. All right, so pretty straightforward stuff here. <clears throat> we'll just start taking these hoses off. And again, they were very, the outer shell was puffed out. So 
they were probably ready to blow. So I'm just gonna number them as I take them off so I know where they go. And I bought all new hose clamps as well. Yeah, these are in pretty rough shape. When the screw comes out. Read my letter if I wrote you. You ask me not to call you on the phone. But there's something I Okay, so what I'm trying to get at here is the, the thermostat. Uh, uh, and what's interesting to me is there's nothing in here. So that's very curious. Did the previous owner take the thermostat out? Which might explain why this motor never seemed to ever get up to temperature. Well, let's see what those new parts look like from, from Cat. Yeah, that must be where the thermostat goes. Well, like I always say with, with Cat is you can, you can buy a better part, but you won't pay more money for it. This thermostat alone was over a hundred bucks. It's just ridiculous. Okay. Regulator. Regulators mount up. Now it's packaged well. Yeah. That looks like a thermostat. And if I was a betting man, I would say that goes in there something like that. But how does it, how does it close though? There's nothing. Viewers want to explain that one to me? There's nothing to close. Unless, does it pull a plate forward? This doesn't make any sense at all. But maybe I got to pull up a drawing. And we'll see how that's supposed to go. All right, so I was just reading through the manual here. And it said, um, ba -ba -ba, if the water temperature regulator is not installed, there's no mechanical control and most of the coolant will take the path of least resistance through the bypass. This will cause the engine to overheat in hot weather and in cold weather, even the small amount of coolant that goes through the radiator is too much and the engine will not get to normal operating temperature. So that would explain why this truck would never get hot. In, uh, in the colder temperatures, in the colder weather. So I guess it's a good thing that we're digging into this, but I just, I can't figure out for the life of me how this, how this guy goes in here. So what I'm gonna do is take apart the spare engine that I had, and we'll see if we can figure out if there's one in there, how it mounts in. It never hurts to have a spare engine laying around. <laughs> okay. There's one last bolt I couldn't get out, so we'll, we'll try this. There it goes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, then it's got to sit in there like that. Okay, so I think I know now why it wasn't sitting down in there because the gasket was blocking the hole. Yeah, and there's the little step that it sits in. Okay, mystery solved. Let me get the wire wheel and clean all this old gasket material off of there, but yeah, it just sits down in there like that. Daha, perfect fit. Like I say though, I still, to the viewers out there that are smarter than me, explain to me how this thing going in and out helps warm up the engine because again, you can see right through it.
Okay, so I cleaned up the faces and I took the standpipe off the engine there. So we'll swap this guy out. It's just a rubber O-ring. Okay, that should be ready to go. And then this gasket goes on there. I wonder which side they want the red on. <laughs> well, I guess I got a 50-50 chance of getting it right. We'll go like that. Okay, and then I got to put a new inner seal in, in the housing. I pried the old one out. So it just sits down in that, in that opening. There, something like that. Okay. And our new high flow thermostat. And then one last gasket, like so. Okay, let's put this mess back on the engine. God made honky tonk angel. I might have known you'd never make a wife. You gave up the only one that ever loved you and went back to the wild side of life. Okay, so I went over to Green Line there and they, uh, just like always, they hooked me up with what I needed. And I took, I just basically took the pieces that I, that I needed and brought them over there and they were able to measure them up for the right diameter and the right length and just cut it off. So I'm going with silicone on this, this lower elbow. It actually goes in right at the uh, bottom of the radiator and it's kind of in behind the frame rail so it's damn near impossible to get at. So I thought instead of going with black hose, I'd go with silicone, a little more flexible and it might be easier to get this elbow into place. But then with silicone, as it heats up, it can loosen off. So I went with the, uh, the spring loaded uh, clamps so it keeps the tension on there and doesn't blow off. But yeah, basically I brought every other piece in as well and they were able to just measure it out, and cut it to length. So I didn't buy too much or too little. And then for the longer stuff, what I did was I just cut off a, a piece of it I said, you know, I needed four feet this diameter, so they were able to, to cut that and hook me up. So I got everything I need for that, and then I stopped it at finning to get cat coolant against my better judgment, but I just, I can't not put the best in, in old blue. So I picked this stuff up, and you don't want to know what this stuff costs. Let's just say I could buy a bottle of Jack Daniels for cheaper than I can buy a, uh, a jug of this stuff, but nothing but the best for... For my old Pete, <laughs> I should have chosen a cheaper hobby. So another trip to, to Home Depot to get a little more brass, I had to get some new valves. But, putting it all back together now. Okay. Alright, next I'm trying to fix this mess on the uh, block heater. So what I'm thinking of doing, I've been turning this, this guy out till it's 90 degrees, maybe a little farther out. And then I got a 90 degree adapter and I'm thinking it'll go something like that. And then I can just put a short piece of hose. It'll be a straight shot instead of that nonsense that was in there before. Oh man, nothing's easy. So the problem was I got this thing turned far enough, but then look, there's a frame rail right there. So I wasn't able to actually turn this guy because it would hit. So I took this guy off and what I'm going to have to do is get a, an extension, drop this down a bit, and then I can put this on. Oh, fun. So back to Home Depot. But what's really interesting though, it's kind of scary, is what's in there. I don't know what that is. I don't know if that's mineral buildup or metal from the oil cooler. That's the, uh, that's the oil cooler drain, this guy right here. So you cat experts out there, tell me what these uh, gallstones are. 
Home Depot didn't have what I needed, so I had to go to Green Line. But I think that's going to work nice. Yeah, something like that. Now, what I'll probably do is turn that up a bit of an angle. And I guess worst case, we could put a 45 here and angle it down. But let's put some thread sealant on here and crank these guys into place and see if we can finish the job. Maybe I'll put that little elbow on before I take up all the slack because we got to get this thing pointed the right direction. Something like that. And then that guy is going to go like that. Picked up these new hose cutters. And they are amazing. Look at that. Something like that should work. I'm losing all my tools. What I'm going to need is one out my jeans. It's that kind of day. There. That's looking better than it was. Okay, this bottom elbow, I have not been looking forward to this job, but it's got to be done. Again, I think, uh, hopefully the, uh, the silicone hose, because it's a little more flexible, offers me the ability to move it around a little bit and try and get it in there. We'll see, we'll see. So we'll put a new drain valve in for the next person who owns this truck or my great grandkids <laughs> they won't have to spray coolant all over their faces all right so now let's see how easy this goes over the, the barb oh man i'm gonna have to put this in the vise yeah, there you go. Helps when it doesn't move around. Okay. There we go. Okay. All right, let's put it on the truck. Okay. Now. Oh, that goes on nice. Oh, okay. Now the trick is going to be getting it on the second one. <laughs> Come on. I wonder. <laughs> Just being squished under here. <laughs> Come on. Oh, of course that one popped off. Okay. Oh, this is not fun. Oh, man. Come on, come on, come on. Almost. Almost. Get in there. Oh, it popped off. Shit. Ah. Ah. Oh my god. I 
think that's on. Yeah, I, uh, I don't want to do that again. All right, let's get those clamps on and maybe crack a cold one to celebrate. There, that should do it. Okay, I think I am done with everything underneath the truck. Thank goodness. So now we'll put on the, uh, the standpipe that heads up to the radiator. That fits nice. Okay, and then we'll put on these big beefy clamps. Oh, there we go. There's no point really tightening them down because I might need to wiggle the hoses around. But we'll just put them in place and then we'll go throw this on the truck. Now this elbow should be a lot easier than that one that was in such tight quarters underneath. Okay, don't forget to take the paper towel out, Mark. I don't think the coolant system would like that in there. Okay. Just full of PSAs in this episode. So when you're mucking around with these hoses and these metal clamps, wear some gloves. I sliced my finger pretty good. Ugh. Getting blood all over my nice engine. I had to do my paper towel and paper towel and uh, electrical tape trick. Ugh. Okay, so with old trucks, there's always, when you think you're making progress and you're, and you're finishing up a project, you end up either creating another or discovering another. So when I was putting the wire back on the alternator here, this stud was stripped. So I took the back cover plate off and I noticed that the little wire to the condenser right there was just kind of held together with a little bit of electrical tape. So that was a pretty Mickey Mouse. And then this was actually corroded right off and it broke off. This alternator here actually was still charging. So there's no point replacing it yet. So what I'm gonna try and do is just get a new condenser and two new wires here and a new stud. And I think I can kind of cobble this back together. And looking at this, this needs to be zip cut and a new end soldered on. So that'll be work for another, uh, another Saturday when I get those parts. But. That's old trucks for you. Maybe someday this uh, project will be finished. Maybe. <laughs> okay, so these are the lines from the, from the heater core in the sleeper, about 15 feet long. And one goes up into the heater core in the dash and then the other one goes right here. So we'll go ahead and cut that off. That is a tool and a half, I have to say. Okay. And I thought this, uh, yeah, just swap the coolant lines. It'd be a couple hour job and then we can get at the inside and rebuild the, the fan motor. And put that fancy cat coolant in the engine start it up and run it outside and have warm air by the end of the episode but alas it doesn't always work that way but no big deal we made some progress today got some lines hooked up got some problems solved found some new problems but we'll fix it up next week so yeah tune in next week and i'll i'll start tackling the inside and maybe we can uh 
we can finish this job up and uh, have some warm air blowing inside the cab. So with that, uh, hope you enjoyed the episode. Thanks for watching to the end. And don't ever forget, if you got it, a trucker brought it.